there. Can everybody hear me? Sorry about that. But I'm back and here and ready to go. Welcome. Thanks for waiting, everybody. Sorry, it took me a little bit to get in today. Having some system issues lately, but we'll get them fixed. So welcome. My name is Melissa Armel and I own a company called The Stock Swish. And today I'm going to talk about my system that I used to trade. You can use my system to day trade, do swing trades, or options trades. But what I like to look at every day from Monday through Friday is day trades. So that's what we're really going to focus on today. Although, like I said, some people do like to use my system for options. The, the only real benefit of using my system for options versus a day trading is that you don't need margin or leverage, so you can have a smaller account to do options, all right? But I will tell you that the price points of the stocks that I trade range from anywhere to, you know, 20 some dollars usually up to maybe like 65 mostly. Sometimes I do things under 20, sometimes I do things over $100. But I'm saying on average, I usually try to stay in that range. But if you have any questions, you can just write them in the room. I'll see here in the room and I'll say the question out loud and answer it. Or you can feel free to give me a call when we're done here. Email me at melissa at the or call me at 929 3200 GAP. And you can also look for me on Fox Business Network and Fox News. So let's talk first of all about the results from October, November. And once I'm done with December, I'm going to put up the December results. So then I'm going to talk about this week's trades in the webinar today. Uh, October and November was earnings season. What's the benefit of those months? You get four quarterly earnings seasons a year, and those are really good, strong times to trade because stocks, companies report their earnings. And typically when they do, they will move. They will have momentum and volatility. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, but there are four quarterly earnings seasons a year. So we had earnings season for last quarter for October and November, and it was a good, solid period. Now, December, you gotta watch what you're doing, although there was a good trade today and yesterday. And so I'm very, very picky in the slower months. But what I'm looking for mostly is to capture the move that a stock makes when it gaps. And we are gonna talk today about my strategy that I trade, which is gaps. Now, a lot of people trade gaps, but not everybody trades gaps the way that I look at gaps, which is what we're gonna talk about today. So this was a really good period here in August and November. That when you're trying to achieve goals, for example, if you want to make a certain amount of money per year, uh, or you are wanting to do this for a career, if, if that really is what you want to do. Some people want to trade for career, some people want to trade just part time, and they like their career, or, they're, or they have a business or something, and they want to do it on the side. Either way, whatever your goals are, I say break it out. It's easier if you just, it's more manageable, I should say, if you break it out monthly, weekly, daily even. Whatever it's, it's going to be that you can wrap your head around it. Uh, because a lot of people say, well, they want to make 100 grand a year or 200 grand a year, and then they really can't wrap their head around, around it. And there will be some days, and we're going to go over the October, November results in here, that you will take a loss. But overall, you should be looking to have more winners than losers. And that is the point of trading. Nothing is 100%. And I just did the annual uh, calls well, just from January to November. I did a tracking video. It's on my YouTube if you go and subscribe. So far from January to November, I'm at 76.5% for the year. So that's, that's pretty good. So you figure out of that, every seven and a half trades is going to be positive and two and a half are going to be losers. And in any given week or month, I could be over 80, you know, I could be in the mid 70s. It just depends on how well we're doing and how many good gaps we get. So I'll talk about that in a little bit more too. And any questions, like I said, you can write it in the room. What do I do? What is the reason for my success? I have a system. I created it. I've been doing nothing but this now for almost 10 years. I started trading in 2008. And on top of that, I follow it. I mean, I don't deviate from my system at all. Uh, there was someone in the room today. We looked to do a short, a short that worked, by the way. So it was a short in mat. And I'm going to go over that today here as well. The person went long and in the room. And that's a no-no. Okay. I never, ever do it. In other words, I don't go long and short the stock on the same day. 
So bottom line is I have a system, I'm strict with it, I follow it, and that's one of the reasons it's easy to follow my calls in the live trading room. Every day in the trading room I make the calls. So we're gonna go over here these October, November results over calls I made in the room. So you would take the train with me in the room, put the stop and get out where I say to if you want to follow my calls. But I follow a system. So many different people that are trading the market Number one, use multiple systems, too many systems, all right? So the results are all over the place and they don't have the consistency and they never really get good at one system. I've become very good at reading gaps. I'm a gap trader and it's because I've been doing gaps for 10 years, which may not seem like a long time, but actually it is a long time to do one thing. It's like, it's like if you uh, played a sport for 10 years every day, you know, every day, day after day after day, and hours and hours and hours playing tennis, you probably would be a pretty good tennis player if that's what you did every day for 10 years. And that's pretty much where I'm at with my gap system. And a lot of people say, well, I've been trading for 10 years, I've been trading for 20 years. Yeah, but what are you trading? Have you been trading one specific strategy or method for 10 years? Most people not. And that's one of the things I think really is the key to my success. And if, if you want to be successful, I think it's the key to anyone's success. You've got to get good at something. And we're going to talk about that more at the end of today as well. So just really quickly here to go over the results from October. All right. You see some days in here, I had days off. I've been on television or radio. So some days I didn't trade because I was off. And then some days were no trades. But pretty much October started out as a strong, strong month. Positive week here in October, first week, no losers at all. Second week did have a couple losers, but there were some nice winners in here. And again, when you have a solid good trade, it, it can cover one or two losers. Cost was a great trade here on the ninth. 3,400 was a profit for that. Dow is a profit here. HTSN didn't work this day and JPM didn't work this day, but the profits for the winners that week more than covered the losses. Plus it was a positive week, still a good week. The next week then was the third week in October. There was a couple losers, mostly winners. Again, Apple was a big one that week. You see how when you get a good quality train and it can go, it can cover more than enough for the losers and bring you positive for the week. I usually do one trade a day, maybe two, as you can see here from the ticker symbols as well. Oh, that's funny. There was Matt from the 23rd. So we did Matt today. Uh, 1023 was Matt too. So Matt was a profitable short 1250 on the 23rd. We did it today. We'll go over it. This was the final week then of the month. And it really was a good month then in um, October over 35 grand. All right. So you see, if you have to set a goal for yourself, you're either trying to make $1,000 a day or $500 a day, whatever your goal is. Okay. And that's how you get the totals. So October was a very good month. Then November... Again, was off for TV and radio, but had the first day of the month was DDD, 1,200 profit. No trades in a six. That's the other thing too, because I focus on my system and only my system. If something doesn't meet my criteria, then I don't trade. And I don't deviate from the system, and then I don't trade if something doesn't meet the system. And I'll go over that too. And this was a beautiful week. Trip was great. Snap was great. It was a short. AMD was a good short. Disney was good. Uh, there was just trade after trade that week. Again, earnings season. Didn't do anything the 13th or the 14th. Target was a nice winner in the 15th. And then, actually, remind me when we're done here, there's a gap that's working tonight. I just thought of that. For some reason, we'll go over. Someone wants to remind me. Galahad, you can remind me. Um, the 16th, there was a loser, but two nice winners in WMT. 17th was a loser's and still ended up being a good week. And then room was closed for Thanksgiving. MoMA was the 28th. SPY was the 30th. November was a good month. So over 26 grand. So all in all, for a two-month period, this is an advanced risk, risking between 1000 and 1500 a trade. You could have made this money in my trading room with my calls. And I did not hold all of these trades, whether longs or shorts. So there was only a couple longs. I'm mostly short. I did not hold any of these trades to any kind of dream target. I really don't do that. I typically like to trade in the morning and I'm done, which we will discuss tonight as well. But you could have held some of those trades longer. I find it much, much easier um, to get out of the trades in the morning. Every once in a blue moon, a couple times a month, I might do an afternoon trade or hold something longer. But for the most part, all of those trades were morning trades. And that is what I want to focus on. So any questions so far? Remind me we're going to go over a gap tonight. I don't want to forget that. Because uh, there is a nice one tonight. We will we will do that. And I know we started a little bit late, but we can go over a little over, I'm sure. Kathy will let us. 
So the point I'm trying to make, though, after going over those results is uh, uh, twofold. One, it is possible to earn a living in the market and be a professional trader. And two, um, the other thing that the other point I want to make is that it's really about the knowledge base. When you have the correct knowledge base, you can be successful. And I think this is true in anything, uh, any profession that you want to do, not just trading. It, a lot of traders have knowledge, but it's not specific enough. It's not focused enough. The knowledge that they have is an overall broad-based knowledge of trading or reading charts or technicals or fundamentals, and it's not specific enough. So my system is unique in the sense that I rate every gap that I see before I trade it in the pre-market or post-market. So you can rate gaps at night, things gap at night too. And I use a checklist, it's a system. It's a 26 point checklist that I use every day when I trade and I don't skip it. 26 points is what I look at and that sounds like a lot, but again, it's the knowledge that tells me looking at that many points on a chart that, this, that the gap is gonna work or has a high probability of working in my favor. And I'm always looking to go in the direction that the stock is gapping. So if it's gapping down, I would rate it as a short. If it's gapping up, I rate it as a long. All right, makes sense? But either way, it's the knowledge of that that gives me the conviction to take the trade and put on the risk, okay? Because I am risking an advanced amount in trades. And I probably could be risking more at this point now trading for as long as I have. But I'm in such a good groove and the results for 2017 really have shown that. I've, I'm Now is not a time in December to increase my risk, but I've considered that for 2018. And I've got over the holidays to think about it. No one should ever increase their risk in, in the in-between holiday periods. But I've thought about it for 2018, so we'll see. Yeah, Galahad's mentioning it. Pay is gapping down tonight, and it is a good gap. And we're not going to go over that chart when we're done. Just remind me, Galahad. Anyways, earning power comes from the knowledge, and then you can achieve these results. So you're not going to achieve these results unless you know what to do. All right? And I do require people to sign up for my Golden Gap class and learn the system before joining the training room. However, I'm offering a special for the holidays where you get the room free for the whole year of 2018 if you sign up for this class, which is this weekend, which is only in a couple of days. Last class for 2017, Saturday and Sunday. I'll go over that more later. Anyways, why does my system work? What is it that I'm seeing in these charts, that I'm seeing in the momentum that I'm seeing coming into these stocks? I'm looking for institutional money to move a stock. And we are going to talk about Matt today because it worked as a short. I didn't see where Matt closed. Gala had to put it in the room where it closed because I got out of it way before the close. But I'm looking to see if people are selling or buying the stock. Institutions. And that's what the 26 points tells me. That's what gives me conviction to the trade. Are hedge funds, banks, are they coming in with big money to buy up the stock or are they dumping the stock? And in the case of actually the overall market, this is a good example because the SPY, the QQQs, the DIA, all the market ETFs have been running, running, running. Why? How? How is the market continuing higher? It is getting bought. It is getting bought up by big, big institutions really ever since the election. Ever since November 2016, the market has gone almost straight up vertical. Every mini pullback has been bought. Every, every time it gaps up, I've been watching it, it has continued higher. So in order to make money as you as one individual, obviously you don't have the power behind you uh, at, like a fund does. You don't have the money behind you, the margin, any of that. You don't have that weightiness, all right, to get in and move stocks. So what you've got to look to do if you want to make money, if you want to profit, is getting and capturing a piece, a small, small piece is really all that's necessary of the money move that's happening in the stocks that institutions are moving. And that's why I do a different one every day because institutions don't play the same stock every day. All right? So I'm looking at a different one every day. One day might be Matt. One day might be Apple. One day might be Baba. I don't know. And I don't know until it gaps. Tonight, we're going to look at the pay. So that'll be watching that tomorrow. So how do I find the money move? I find it in the gap. Now, I'm not predicting the gap before it happens, although to be honest with you, I did kind of predict pay, which is hilarious, and we will talk about in the room tomorrow. And before I forget, if you want to trial to the trading room for the rest of the week, Wednesday through Friday, email me. Kathy, if you can put my email in the room, you can email me, because I'm sure we're going to get a good trade tomorrow. But anyways, I really, in general, do not predict the gap. I wait for the gap to happen, then I predict what it's going to do after it gaps. 
But I've got such a good instinct lately with charts, trading for as long as I have, that I can get a feel for something. But I still don't take the trade. I still don't put any risk on until after it gaps. Now, there are people in the room, Galahad's one of them. Sometimes he gets in trades if I say, I think this is going to do something before it gaps. Um, but that's you're really supposed to wait till it gaps. And the system you learn from me would be wait for the gap. Wait for it to gap up or down, then rate it. And you can do it at night, you can do it in the morning. So because I open the room at 8.30 a.m., if you're on West Coast time, okay, if you're somewhere else in the world and it's really early, you could look at gaps at night. And you could prep for yourself at night before the morning, all right? So, you know, a lot of people trade with me that live all over the world. It depends on their time zone. For some people, it's almost midnight. The nice thing about trading gaps is I'm just in and out in that quick time period between 9.30 and 10. So I'm prepping in the morning between 8.30 and 9. You could wait till 9, but that's really crunching it, unless you do it at night. You prep a half an hour, hour, rate the gap, scan, know what you want to do, get one or two or three picks that you're going to watch, and then you wait for the setup and you take it between 9.30 and 10. And that's when I look to get in. If something doesn't set up by 10 o'clock, I'm not doing it. It's not that I'm not, if I'm in a trade, I may hold it past 10, which I did today in the mat. But usually, 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 I'm trying to get in before 10 and then get out. Now, oh, Matt closed at 1462. That's hilarious. It didn't. Did it really? That's hilarious. We'll talk about that mat trade in a minute. What was the low of the day in the mat? Please write that in the room, Galahad. Anyways, what is a gap? So if you've never heard of a gap before, this is brand, brand new to you. I'm going to give you a basic definition, which is going to be good enough for you to understand it. What is a gap? A stock gaps when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. Okay, it's really not that difficult of to see what a gap is. Casey was a gap. Oops, hold on. Case it was a gap that happened from last night. Stock closed up here around 121. Boom. Open in the morning. Down here around 114.50-ish. I think it was the high 114.45-ish or something. Anyways, this really gapped down here. I forget if it was last night or this morning. No, it was last night. This was last night too. And then it fell. So the stock collapsed on the day. Low in here was 108. Could you have shorted this today? Yes. And if you'd shorted this today, guess what? You would have made money. Why? The stock collapsed. It fell. It fell $6 plus. Okay, so this is a gap. Just the difference between the close and the open. And I like to focus on the shorts for the simple reason that I like things to move fast. Now, if you say, well, Melissa, where's a bullish gap? I'm going to find one for you to show you too. The stock gapped here, open, rallied, gapped up. So this was back here in mid-October-ish, okay? Open, rallied, ran up here to 113 something, boom. Gapped up to 114 something, rallied. So this was a gap up. So you could have went long here, and actually this is a gap up here too, but I really would have said neutral, but it really was a small gap up. You could have gone long here or here. So these were bullish gaps, and this was a bearish gap, so you can see the difference. But either way, the difference between the close and the open is a variation. It could be big, it could be small. Here's another one here. This is a bullish gap. Closed here, boom, gapped up, rally. But you can't short every gap down, and you can't go long every gap up. And let me show you another example. So here we have a gap up that happened in KC. Closed here, gapped up, rally, broke, fell. So you couldn't have gone long here and been profitable on the day. It was a solid red bar. So that's why I'm trying to figure out and predict. I'm trying to predict as accurately as anyone possibly can beforehand what is going to happen to KC or Matt or any of the ones. I'm trying to figure out, are they going to buy it on the day? Are they going to sell it on the day? What's going to happen? Is it going to rise or fall? Because if you can predict the direction a stock is going to go before it does it, you can get in and you can make money. And it's the same way with the market. If you could have predicted the market was going to rally, you could have bought the market in 20, uh, November 2018 or 2016 and been in it still now. Okay. Here was a bullish gap. Here, this was Verizon. I didn't see where this closed today, but it ran over 53. Target was 53, ran up to 53.25. Stock closed here, boom, gapped up, rally. So this was a gap up, and you see here was a long. This was a good, solid bullish gap. So you could have gone long Verizon today, and if you had, you would have made money. Here was another one here. Stock close to your gapped up. Big rally here. This was back in the summer in July. Here was a gap down in Verizon. Closed here. Gap down. Boom. If you'd shorted it, you would have made money. 
But again, you can't you can't go long every bullish gap or short every bearish gap. So I'm trying to find the good ones. I'm happening to point them out to you. But here was one I wouldn't have touched for the 10 foot pole. Stock closed here, gapped up, rallied, fell broke. So you couldn't have made money here going long. But it was a gap up. It was a gap up. It was valid, valid to rate. I would not have done that. Okay. So how do gap works, gaps work and why do they work? They work because they're being made by institutions, the ones that I do. So sometimes gaps are made for many, many different reasons, but not really a footprint. So I'm looking for a footprint. I want to go with those big footprints. That's where the point rating system is so critical to tell me, go with it, Melissa, or don't do it. And 20 is the cutoff. So if a gap rates 20 points or more, I'm doing it. If it doesn't, I'm not. 18, 19 is 50, 50 chance of working or failing. So I could rate something, it could get 15 points where I'm not going to do it. It's just not enough. And you say, well, 15 points is a lot of things, but it's not enough, okay? The idea of any system at all, and particularly my system, is I'm trying to find the highest odds possible before I take the risk in the trade to know that it will work. And even then, I'm still using a stop. A stop protects me, and I'm using limit order stop. So if the trade does not work, which some of the trades I showed you from October, November did not work, you get stopped out. So your risk is fixed. So you do not have an unlimited risk when you day trade. And by the way, when you do an option, you should still manage your trades. You can put an option trade on and risk 500 bucks, but it doesn't mean you let the whole thing go bust if it doesn't work out. You still should have a money management for your options trades. Even though it's it doesn't have a stop per se, you should still watch it and see it. And I tell people, kill your options trades at 50% because you can always retake it, all right? Any questions so far here today? All right. So institutional money is in charge at all times. All times. Even if you think it's not, it is. There were times when Apple sold off a couple weeks ago, but it flipped right around. There were times when the market looked like it was going to make a top, Drop, break, fall. Actually, that happened just last week. And guess what? Flipped around completely again. Even when you think it, and this is where people get upset and they feel like, oh, it's tricking me. It's tricking you into it. No, it's not. It's not. You're really not reading the right thing if you think that a certain move is over or done or if you think it's turning around or, or you don't know how to read overall trend right. When you're looking at something, it's so important to see what's really happening, Okay you got to be with institutional money. That is the way that you will be profitable as a trader. And that does not mean that every trade that you ever take will work, but it does mean that more will work than not. And that is what you need in order to do this for a career. Now, this was yesterday's, okay? This was a gap from yesterday. All right, we did this one. Stock closed here, gap down. Okay, so we'll close the night before all the way up here. Around 73 something, it was once. Gap down here to 47 something. I forget the reason for this gap, actually. Anyways, drop broke fell. Look at the volume in this. So down here is the volume. This is a daily chart. This is a weird bar here. Um, anyways, here's the volume, all right? So here's the one minute chart. What did once do? Closed here, gap down. I watched this to short. If you wanted to be really aggressive, you could have done this boom right out of the gate. This had, this had a big spread and big stops in it. So I did not do this here, but you could have. And if you'd shorted this here, you could have got out and made money. Waited, pushed back, shorted it here, got the drop. So whatever you did with this, whether you did it here, 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 you could have even done it later in here. It was a nice, beautiful short. You see how it moved and how it dropped. All right. So entry in, this was, oh, I have Matt here. Sorry, I meant once. Just ignore that. This is actually once. The entry in the once, sorry about that, people, was 43.25. Share quantity 1,000 because the stop was big in this. Stop was big in once and the spread. Exit 41.75, boom. Profit 1,500 bucks. Now, people always ask me, well, how much money do I need to trade? And da 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 da. The risk in the trade was 1,500. All right. But as far as you having an account with a broker, if you have a proprietary day trading account, you would have needed 4,325 with a 10 to 1 leverage to take the trade. Buying power needed at a um, at a at a at a retail place. You're going to need a minimum of twenty five thousand to trade at any retail place. In which case, you're going to have four to one or hundred grand in BP, and so that would have worked. out.
Matt, okay, traded down today, fell. What are you going to do with it? This was another one that was a gap. So we were talking about this earlier. What was the date on that one that we did? Oh, here it was. Was that the one? In August? I have to go back and look in the, in the tracking. I don't know if we did that one. Here was a gap in, in, no, it was July. July was the mat fell in here. Anyways, here was today's mat. Gap down here, fell. Boom, okay? So this was a small trade. Not a huge trade or anything in it, but guess what? It worked. It was still money. So do you see how you can be profitable even in something just that doesn't even look like much like that? But you got to get the direction right. You got to get the entry. You got to get the stop and everything. And actually, this almost stopped. There were some people in the room that ended up killing it, but it ended up going to work and it held the stop. And I squished this all together here. This is a one minute. All right. I just wanted you to see how the trade played out. Low of the day, I guess, ended up being 14.59, which is kind of ironic where I ended up getting out of this. But one minute, I know this is squished, ended up taking it here, okay, right here in the morning. This is before 9.45. Again, I get in before 10. And I had to stop all the way up here. Had to stop at 98, it held. Pushed back a couple times and held, held, held. Again, it's the resistance. Stock held the resistance. Held the first drop off here right into the open and then held the resistance. So sometimes people think this is a buy in here. Again, I told you what somebody was doing in the room. It wasn't. It was a short. It pushed back. It pushed back. It pushed back. It held the resistance. It held the stop. Went and broke. Okay. Went down even to the low of the day, which set, was set in the morning. And actually the low of the day in the morning was 59. This could have gone a little bit more today, but it was just a normal gap. I, I don't remember the reason for it, but it wasn't earnings or anything. Anyways, the irony is it closed at my exit price, which I got out of it way before the close, but... That must have been some kind of number in the chart. We can look at that too. Entry on mat today was 1479, exit 1462. So really not some huge massive move, but still a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks. A very easy trade, a thousand dollars. So you know, you don't have to have a dollar, two dollar, three dollar moves, huge targets and everything, but you will get them. You will get them, and when you get them, you want to capitalize on them. And that's how you can have two, three thousand dollar days or more. But you're not, you may not get them every day. And I knew enough to know, looking at the gap in math, let me go back to this, that it really wasn't gonna to go to some huge massive thing on the day. But I knew that it wasn't gonna get bought. I knew the stock wasn't gonna get bought on the day, and that's why I held through the trade. All right, and the conviction helped me with that. Anyways, buying power for this one, again, just to help people out for their accounts, 10 to 1 prop cash, 88.40. BP, if you have a regular one, which you're going to need 25 grand, which is 100 grand, and buying power for a day trading account, 88,740. Okay. So if you have questions about brokers, you can call a broker, find out. If you would like a referral, you can email me. I don't think it matters where you trade. As long as you have an active day trading account, you can get in and out of trades and also a um, hotkeys. I, I mean, I just think hotkeys are, are important. Um, mouse, using a mouse takes too long to really get in and out of a trade. And again, that's personal preference, but sometimes we're in and we're out so quickly. So, so far this week, totals 2,520. Very, very nice total for, for the week, okay? And it's only Tuesday. So if your goal is to make five grand a week, you're halfway to your goal. I mean, I can make my goal for the week tomorrow and pay. Do you see? So this is, again, the philosophy of chunking, chunking, chunking it out. So one of the things I do is focus on time of the day. I'm very, very specific about that because the money move usually happens in the morning. Institutions don't sit around. If they want to dump a stock or buy a stock, like the Verizon that got bought today, they're not going to wait. They're not going to wait, 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 wait to do it. They're going to take it. They're going to get in. And they're usually going to get in into the morning, into the open. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that momentum to trade in a gap. Again, I'm not predicting the gap. I'm waiting to see after it gaps, I'm predicting the move it's gonna make in the gap after the open, after 9.30. And that's the time that I'm focused on. Now, I did show you a couple charts that had different gaps that were not made with institutional money. So not every gap is made with institutional money. Absolutely not. But you want to play the ones that are, okay? That is the key. 
And the nice thing about gaps is that they happen all the time on a regular basis. Some gaps are better than others. Like today, today was a, it was an okay gap, it was good to do, it was money, but it wasn't amazing, okay? So you don't wanna hold that to some piggy target or whatever, or take some huge risk. But you really wanna have the conviction in the sell-off if you're gonna short, or the buying if you're gonna go long, that it's being made with institution, because that's how you're gonna get the movement in the right direction. And also be able to read the targets and the support and resistance correct. I mean, if you people tend to buy support and resistance as a as a as a strategy, it, it actually is not a strategy. It's just a way to read different price levels. But not every support level will hold. And also, there's a million support levels on a chart. You could say level one, level two, level three, level twenty five. I could point out a million supports and resistances even in Mac today. How did I know that that level was going to hold? Well, this is what should come and you'd learn from me, okay? Because I'm really good at reading price. What needs to hold for the institutions to hold it down? Because you have something, let me just go back to this really quickly. Um, you have, it's pressure on the stock. So what resistance is, is pressure. It's pressure that's holding it down and it's pu pushing down on top of it. And that's what I'm reading in the price levels, so that the pressure is going to hold like a ceiling. Matt is a ceiling, okay? It's, it's being held here in the ceiling, and it's not going to go above the ceiling, which is the pressure, which the shorts are putting on, which is the bears. So they're going to sell more into that area and push it down. And that's what happens, and that's how you get the sell-off, okay? And that's a good uh, basic understanding of support and resistance. But that's what you want to learn how to play on, because that is how you are going to make money. So the idea is to learn the system first, then the money will come. If you cannot afford to risk $1,000 a trade, then risk what you can afford so that you can build yourself up, build your learning process, build the knowledge, build the skill level, which it takes a skill level, which you're going to learn, build up your account. It's, it's about having the right knowledge, which I said at the beginning. So if you'd like to learn my system, it is called the Golden Gap System. And like I said, the class is this weekend, December 16th and 17th. Now, what else do you need to be successful besides having a trading system? And it's also helpful to have a mentor that's making the calls like I am. Um, that's also helpful too. But really, what else do you need to be successful? You need to have a good grasp on your emotions when you're trading, knowing yourself. A lot of people say, well, you can't have any emotions in trading. That's absolutely the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard because that would be impossible since you're a human. And as a human being, guess what? You have emotions and you can't ignore them. So the best thing that you can do is to help yourself get control of your emotions to make you decide that you really like a certain trade or stock to trade. So that's where I get the conviction part of it, which is what I talk about. If I don't have any conviction in something, I don't want to do it. And if I have conviction in it and I do it, and what gives me the conviction is the system, is the knowledge. So I use my emotions to my advantage when I trade. Because if I don't like something, I don't do it. And if I do, then I do. But the system is the weight behind it that tells me it's okay to do it. All right? A lot of people are all over the place with their trading and their money management. And you've got to be consistent with that as well. You can't cry and you know cry a river if you lose in one trade. But that's where the money management comes up where you're risking the same in each trade. So if you lose in one trade and you make money in another trade, the risk should be the same in each trade. You can't take one trade and make a thousand bucks and you risk 500 and take the next trade and risk 2000. Well, your results are going to be all over the place because what if the trade that you risk 2000 loses? So you see your, your risk has to be similar, or equal to similar in all the trades you take. All right. So all of this plays a part of it. And I do believe that this is one of the reasons why people struggle with being profitable. Not only do they not focus on one thing, but they can't get their emotions under control enough to realize how to use them for their benefit. People try to not use their emotions or ignore their emotions or pretend that they shouldn't have them. And actually, in educational trading educational teachers teach people to ignore their emotions or not use them or act like a computer. That's impossible. So they'll never achieve that goal. So it's like a failed notion or idea in the first place. You gotta get a handle on it so you can use your emotions for your good. But it's the weight of it is the intellect, which is your mind, which is using the system correctly, which is the knowledge. And that will help you with your emotions, all right? And that doesn't mean you're never going to have a bad day, but it means it's not the end of the world. And nothing should be, because you can always get up tomorrow and take another trade. If you lose today, guess what? You get up tomorrow and take another trade. And you can have a huge trade tomorrow. 
And when we don't do any trades in the room, I always say that to people. Well, there wasn't anything good today. Don't worry about it. We'll get something good tomorrow. There's some people that just want to trade every day and insist on trading every day no matter what. And I'm not like that. I used to be at the beginning, you know, 10 years ago. I'm not anymore. But I understand what people are going through in their mind. They feel like if they don't do something today, then it's something lost. There's nothing lost. If you do something, there's no good trades and you might lose. And it might dig a hole into your week, which would not be good. Okay. Any questions so far from anyone? We good? Anyways, you really got to think uh, independently if you want to do well with this thing. I mean, going with the crowd is just going to put you in a negative mindset. And like I said, a lot of people just don't look at charts right. They're not focusing on the right thing. They're all over the place. Um, you really have to focus on getting good. And then if you do, guess what? The money will come. It's like you want to be the best gap trader you could possibly, possibly be. And if you are you will be profitable. The money will come. So whatever amount you have to risk that you're capable of risking with the size of account you can open, at this moment, your real goal is, is to get good. Because then the money that you really, really want, the 61000 or whatever your goals are in two months, you know, will come. Now, if we say, well, how long will it take, Melissa? I don't know. I don't know you. I don't know how fast of a learner you are. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know you individually, but guess what? You know you, you know you, and you have to believe that you can do it. And if what I said today makes sense, then you will know that you can do it. You have to let go of all the negative stuff that's happened in the past. If you've taken classes or lost money in the market, you got to let it go. You'll never be able to move forward if you can't do that. And I think people hang on to things that happened to them in the past and it prevents them from moving forward. It's like if you're in a relationship, this is, good, this is a good example. If you're in a relationship with someone and it does not work out, okay, then after that, guess what? You break up with them, doesn't mean you're never gonna fall in love again. You're gonna never get in another relationship again because the one relationship, the last relationship didn't work out, you're gonna be alone for the rest of your life, that's silly, that's silly. We're gonna go over pay at the end, which is a live gap tonight that's happening. We're almost done in here with the, with the slides and then I am gonna go over that. Anyways, just to recap here, time of the day is very critical to maximize profits. And the nice thing about day trading, particularly my system, is you can do it in the morning if you're in Eastern time zone and you can do it from home. And if you're not in Eastern time zone, it still is only a short time of the day you're trading really in a half an hour, an hour a day. So if you'd like to learn my method, it's called the Golden Gap Course. It is a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. You will learn the six entries in my class that I do, and you will learn price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. So you'll, you'll learn to read those levels like I was showing you in Matt for where you know you need to put the stops, okay? So you, I put in a stop because if it goes over a certain level, guess what? I want to be out of it. I do not want to be in it if it goes over a certain level, okay? So you will also learn one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts, how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction, which is to make money, the direction that the, the stock is moving, that the institutions are pushing it, whether down or up. You will also learn a more proficient and advanced way to read charts, focusing on technical analysis and gaps. And you will learn how to get conviction in your trading in the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for consistent profit, which is so important. It's so important to be consistent with your money management, with the time of the day that you train, with the system that you're doing. I am even mostly do shorts. That's how consistent I am in the focus, okay? And you will learn with me how to trade momentum. Think about what I said about chunking it out. Chunk, 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 chunk. Day trading, okay, is about chunking it out for income generation. This is not long-term investing. It's not like Warren Buffett. You're trading the stock. You are in and you are out, okay? That's it. And ideally, the quicker you're in and out, the less you're at risk. So that's why I try to do these trades to get out in minutes, okay? And it is important to have conviction. I mean, there are people that do trades, that take trade ideas from people that are in, they get in emails and newsletters and magazines, and they don't know what strategy the person's doing. I don't know how people live like that. They have no conviction in anything. Again, the flip-flopping is wrong. Think about what I said. When you're risking your hard-earned money in a trade, you better believe it's going to work. And if you don't, why are you doing it? 
all right? And that's the importance of learning and really understanding, which if you learn and do my class, you will understand why this stock is going to work or why it's not going to work, all right, on the gap, on that day. So empower yourself to trade the market. If you're interested in my class, it is a two-day class. It is nine to five, Saturday and Sunday. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. I like to focus on shorts. This is the last class for 2017. So really, if you want to trade with me in 2018, this would be the last one to do. I do not have a schedule yet for January. I'm waiting for my schedule for TV. Uh, so if you think you want to trade with me in 2018, this would be the class to do. It's 9 to 5, Saturday and Sunday. Cost of the class is $49.99. Email me if you want to sign up. And I'm doing the trends course the day after on the 18th, okay? And if you want to sign up for both of these, you get a discount. You save $500 if you sign up for the Golden Gap and the Trends. If you want to do swing trades or look at long-term trends, the Trends course is good. So it'd be three days of classes. And the cost of this together is $54.99. This is a good deal. And I have no idea when I'm going to do the Trends class again. I do not do that class this often. I only do it a few times a year. So it's good if you want to look at the long-term trend. If you want to sign up for this class, I'm offering customer pick, two holiday specials. You can choose one. Sign up for the Gap course. You can get the options letter free for all of 2018 and the trading room. Or you can sign up for the class and get the trading room free for two years. I've never done that before. That will help people tremendously, tremendously. But you've got to sign up by Friday the 15th. And then the class is this weekend. Any questions about anything with the class, how to sign up, the offers. If you want a trial for the week, email me. It's only Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but you've only got to let them decide about the class. And it's hard to believe it's almost 2018. It's insane. I mean, we're talking today. It's 12 days till Christmas. Hanukkah started today. I cannot believe it. But really, I mean, this is the last class of the year. And I think 2018 is going to be an incredible, incredible year to trade. Whether or not they pass the tax reform before the end of 2017, I do believe it will pass. So whether they meet the deadline that Trump said by Christmas holiday or if it rolls into 2018, I think 2018 is going to be a great year to trade for day traders because there's going to be a lot of volatility momentum. This year we are pretty much straight all the way up. And I'm not saying we don't continue to be bullish in 2018. But I think stocks are going to have more wild gyrations. And that just means more opportunity for traders to capitalize on. So you have to be able to spot that opportunity before it happens. And not only that, you have to be able to play it in the right direction. Now, really quickly here, I'm going to bring up the pay just to show you the pay. And Kathy can write my information in the room. Um, oh, hold on here. I got to pull up my charts. I'm not signed in. Just hang on one second. <laughs> 